SpaceX is facing problems in testing 33 Raptor engines simultaneously. SpaceX's Mars-bound Starship rocket is getting some work done to gear up for its upcoming orbital launch attempt. It aims to launch that test flight, the first orbital mission for the Starship program, in late October or November. It will involve Booster 7 and Ship 24, prototype versions of Starship Super Heavy First Stage and Starship Upper Stage, respectively. SpaceX has been performing static fire engine tests with both vehicles at its Starbase facility in South Texas over the past six weeks or so. On Monday, for instance, Booster 7 ignited seven of its 33 Raptor engines, more than it had ever lit up simultaneously before. Presumably, SpaceX will work its way up to a full 33 Raptor static fire with Booster 7 before the orbital attempt. But that ramp up will have to wait at least for a little while since Booster 7 is no longer on the pad. Booster 7 transported back to the Starship factory for robustness upgrades ahead of the flight. SpaceX said via Twitter on Thursday. Those upgrades might involve fortifying Super Heavy Booster 7's thrust section to ensure it can survive Raptor engine failures, which is an understandable concern. A few weeks after July's unexpected explosion, Booster 7 kicked off the most important stage of its flight qualification process, with extreme caution on August 9th and 11th with two back-to-back -back static fires, each igniting just one of 20 installed Raptor engines. Both appeared to be successful, and SpaceX returned B-7 to its Boca Chica, Texas factory, reinstalled a full set of 33 engines, and sent the Super Heavy back to the launch pad two weeks later. On August 31st, SpaceX attempted to ignite three of Booster 7's 33 Raptors. One engine failed to ignite, but the others did not, resulting in a mostly successful two-engine test. Over the next two weeks, SpaceX performed several ignition-free spin prime tests, two of which appeared to spin up all 33 engines without causing an explosion. Finally, SpaceX telegraphed its next major goal with a seven-engine spin prime test on September 16th and another, albeit with a slightly different set of engines, on September 19th. Shortly after the second seven-engine spin prime, SpaceX refilled B-7 with propellant, went back through the same procedures, and ignited the same seven engines for about five seconds. No obvious issues arose and Musk later implied that the test went well. It set a new record for the largest number of Raptors simultaneously ignited on a single prototype, and likely also broke the record for most thrust produced by a vehicle tested at Starbase. SpaceX must, at long last, static fire a Super Heavy with all 33 Raptor engines installed, generating a total of around 7,600 metric tons of thrust. With 33 Raptor version 2 engines powering it and plenty of evidence that those Raptors are far from perfectly reliable, we can't be sure if everything is going to go well. In other words, testing 33 Raptor engines simultaneously is a really big deal. For a test with all 33 Raptors for Booster 7, SpaceX needs to fully fill a Super Heavy booster for the first time. Depending on the storage situation, that process will likely begin by filling Booster 7 with about 2,500 tons of liquid nitrogen, about two-thirds full. If SpaceX also temporarily fills one of the orbital tank farm's liquid oxygen or methane tanks with nitrogen, it could fully load Booster 7 with around 3,500 tons of nitrogen. At least according to SpaceX's own website, that's about the same weight as the propellant Super Heavy is designed to lift off with, which is around 3,400 tons. If that full cryoproofing goes well, SpaceX will then likely perform one of several wet dress rehearsals, ultimately filling Booster 7 with approximately 2,900 tons of cryogenic oxygen and 500 tons of cryogenic methane. Out of an abundance of caution, Super Heavy B-7 will likely have far less propellant aboard during almost all of its static fire tests but a full static fire with a full load of propellant simulating most pre-launch conditions will likely be one of the last main goals of any static fire campaign. At full thrust, 33 Raptor 2 engines will likely burn about 25 tons of propellant per second, 50% more than NASA's retired Saturn V moon rocket. It'll also produce a level of thrust seven times greater than Falcon 9. A huge amount of propellant will be needed regardless. On the other hand, it is worth noting that not only the rocket itself, but also the whole launch system could be met with problems during a full 33 Raptor test. The entire launch infrastructure surrounding the rocket plays a crucial role in keeping the rocket safe. 
This is what Elon Musk calls stage zero, which is at the same level of difficulty as the booster or ship. When 33 powerful Raptor engines are involved, even nominal pre-burner testing will likely produce a massive fireball that could engulf Super Heavy's aft, if not the entire booster, in flames. For static fire testing, Raptors typically produce a smaller and briefer but still substantial fireball during the shutdown, creating another potential source of damage to any sensitive hardware located anywhere on or in Booster 7's thrust section. As such, the aero covers on Super Heavy may be just as important for surviving static fires as they'll be for surviving launches and landings. This is a problem that SpaceX is hoping to solve at its Boca Chica facility, especially since there are some noteworthy special points at the Starbase launch pad. Normally, launch pads use a flame diverter to deflect the intense exhaust away from the rocket and the launch pad. Instead, SpaceX is building a separate steel mount and water-cooled thruster diverter designed to stand up to the fury of a super heavy booster without allowing the rocket's plume to dig a crater into the ground after every ignition. While choosing to pursue a dramatically different launch pad design for Starship may at first glance seem risky, SpaceX actually has more than a decade of experience building and operating similar mount and flame diverter setups at its McGregor, Texas rocket development and test facilities. A step further, NASA itself once heavily relied on similar technologies and strategies to rapidly build, test, and fly rockets larger than anything that came before them. It's safe to say then that Super Heavy will require a diverter that is far larger still to survive thrust equivalent to more than three Falcon Heavy rockets. Most recently, SpaceX has just tested a new water deluge system on the orbital launch mount that will aid the fire and sound suppression during Super Heavy booster testing and Starship launches. The company used a high-pressure nitrogen gas nozzle to both atomize the water and quickly displace oxygen. Huge thanks once again to Lab Padre for capturing the footage. And I've been waiting for this for a long time, honestly. This water deluge system was long overdue. I've actually wondered where it's been this whole time, but thank goodness it's finally here. This also means the 33 engine test is not so far away. So all there is to do now is to just wait and see. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.